All right, welcome to the uh, regular meeting for the Board of Commissioners for the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. Uh, please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, one nation with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. This meeting is in order. We will now go into roll call. Chairperson William McCurdy. Present. Vice Chairperson Tick Sagerblum. Here. Commissioner Marissa Brown. Present. Commissioner Carrie Cox. She is present on the phone. Commissioner Richard Churchio. Here. Commissioner Nancy Bruni. Commissioner Valerie Craig. Present. Commissioner Michael Disman. Present. Commissioner Lachana Turner. Present. A quorum is present and we are in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law. Thank you so much. Uh, this is the time set aside for public comment. This portion of the agenda must be limited to matters that are on the agenda for action. If you wish to be heard, please come forward to the podium, give your name for the record. Uh, the amount of discussion as well as the time to any speaker is allowed will be three minutes. Uh, please come forward at this point if you have, uh, if you want to address us for matters on the agenda. Hearing and seeing no one in person or on the phone, we'll move on to item number three, approval of the minutes of the special meeting of September 7, 2023. I entertain a motion. Move to approve. We have a motion by Vice Chair Segerblum. I second. Second. We have, all right, we have a second by Commissioner Craig. Is there any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, we'll take it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any abstentions? Anyone opposed? Minutes are approved. We'll now move on to item number four, approval of the agenda with the inclusion of any emergency items and the deletion of any items. Director Jordan. There are no items to delete. All right, seeing that we have a motion by Vice Chair Segerblum. Second. Second by Commissioner Churchill. Is there any discussion? Hearing saying no, move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Any abstentions? Uh, we have approved the agenda. Move on to item number, uh, section number two, our business items to receive a report from executive director of, on administrative operational activities of the agency. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, all. It's a couple things I wanted to highlight uh, since we last got together. I'm very, very excited to announce that uh, we received a $250,000 safety grant from HUD. This is a um, competitive, it was a competitive application process um, the operations team uh, did a great job in pulling together data that uh, secured us a, a, um, a position to be awarded $250,000. And as we've had conversations over the last couple of years about ways in which we can increase our safety, here's just one way that we can do it. So, so hats off to the team for an outstanding, it's outstanding job. Um, another thing I wanted to mention, just calendar items. I had an opportunity to participate in our, our Vegas flying event in Washington, D.C. last week. And I just want you to know that people, we're all working really, really hard to convince, you know, D.C. that uh, we just need more funding. I had an opportunity to uh, spend time in that venue as well as the uh, Congressional Black Caucus meetings. And I wanted to give a personal thank you for, to um, the CBC chair, our congressman, Stephen Horsford, who did an outstanding job. So it's, it's not without saying we're represented quite well in, in DC. The uh, next thing I wanted to do was um, just make, make a presentation. I've talked to the uh, board in the community about our efforts to really build relationships in the community. You know, we have our three principles, customer service, housing opportunities and resident opportunities. And we're building a very, very strong relationship with our Las Vegas Raiders. And I'd like to have Paula Tucker come up and uh, make a presentation to, um, to someone who's, been, who's played a significant role in helping us build that reputation. Thank you, everyone. Um, could we have um, Ms. Piper, could we have you come up oh, to sure. please? Yeah. Maybe 
Okay, so we wanted to express um, our, uh, our thanks. So I want to read this letter from Mr. Jordan, and then we're going to present this um, uh, to the Raider Foundation. Um, Dear Piper Overstreet White, the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority would like to express a resounding thank you to the Las Vegas Raiders Foundation for inviting us to participate in your recent events. On August 6, 2023, we attended the Raiders Training Day event with our youth, families, and veterans. It was an amazing day filled with fun, family, and education. Our families got to spend time together as fans of the Raiders, watching and meeting players up close and personal. Beyond this fan experience, they were exposed to many of the jobs and career opportunities available, many of which they might not have known about. They interacted with trainers, coaches, security, uh, event planners, and more. The event provided a great insight into the world of football beyond the field. On September 6, 2023, we attended the Raiders watch party for the NFL season kickoff game between the Raiders and the Broncos at Intermountain Health Performance Center. Once again, it was a fun-filled family event. Our youth met all of the high school girls' football teams, and they were impressive and, inspire and inspiring. The indoor activities and food trucks were incredible. Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority re uh, residents and staff had a great time cheering on the Raiders, and what a bonus. We won. We appreciate new partnerships, and we look forward to working even more together um, to better our community and provide new opportunities one household at a time. Sincerely, Louis Jordan, Executive Director of the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. I do want to make one um, note that Ms. Dominique Robinson, our uh, assistant, uh, office assistant with the Supportive Services Department, actually put this shadow box together. And it has um, our t-shirts that we all wore, pictures, the group picture. And we asked every family in, uh, to do a thank you card. We have thank you cards in here. And then the re additional thank you cards are in the gift box. So thank you very much. Oh my goodness. Well, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman and commissioners. You got me good. What a surprise. Um, for the record, Piper Overstreet White, SVP of Government Community Relations for the Las Vegas Raiders. And I am, I'm really taken aback because, um, you know, our commitment to the Las Vegas Raiders, our commitment to excellence is, on and off, excellence is on and off the field. And we have an unwavering commitment to this community. And while we've invested um, so many resources and have such strong, extensive programming, we're always looking for ways to build upon that, expand upon it, making sure that the local community um, gets to share in having a hometown NFL team. That's important to us. So whether it be experiential training camp, watch parties, or programming, we've talked about uh, health and wellness and what we could do to support um, uh, housing authority clients, residents, uh, staff. And um, in addition to that, if you know the opportunity exists to come talk about careers in sports, I think there's a lot of um, opportunities that people aren't aware of. And maybe youth growing up didn't even think, hey, I can work in professional sports and not be on the field, right? So we will continue these conversations with staff. Our conversations have been awesome, and they've led to some, some great experiences and more to come. So thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Okay. Thank you so much again, Piper and the uh, Raiders Foundation, uh, for your for your leadership and also for your partnership. And we look forward to seeing uh, what can come of, of this new found relationship. Thank you again, Piper. Thank you, Commissioners. A couple other things I wanted to mention. Um, tomorrow, staff and I will be attending um, 
events relating to Hispanic History Month. We're going to be at the Viva La Viva over at the Pearson Center. Then on Saturday, we're going to participate in the uh, parade and the celebration at the uh, West Side Centennial School. And before we wrap up, uh, you know, again, we, we talk about this work beyond just housing. You know, we have a gentleman with us today who started 30 years ago with our then apprenticeship program, our then apprenticeship program, excuse me. And as the board recall, last meeting, you approved us to do another, start another apprenticeship program. Well, one of the original folk from that program is retiring after 30 plus years. And I want to have Andre Cower come on up. Andre. If, if I had to entitle this presentation, it would be more than just a job. You know, Andre made a career. You know, he'll, I remember when we first met and we briefly talked about the uh, apprenticeship program. If I called him, he said, Lou, I was one of those guys hanging out 30 plus years ago and I trusted a system. And so uh, now 30 years later, he's retiring and he's agreed to come back after retirement to help us shape our newly formed pre-apprenticeship program. So Andre, on behalf of, of all of us, you know, the, the residents, the employees, and the commissioners, we appreciate your contributions to this authority. And thank you so much for all you've done. All right. It's nice, yeah. This is some stuff you can enjoy. You got to look all stuff. All right. Well, let's see a word or two. Sure. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I am very thankful today uh, to be here. I want to thank God first for the opportunity that he provided me. Like Mr. Jordan said, I grew up in Herbert Gerson, and uh, I was kind of hanging out trying to figure my way out, playing basketball. And the opportunity presented itself to get into an apprenticeship program. And I never wanted to work at the Housing Authority because I grew up in the Housing Authority. I always wanted to be an executive and wear suits and I wanted to be a businessman. But when God ordered your steps, you have to follow where he sent you. And 30 years later, when I look back over the residents and all the young men and women life that I touched, the example that I set, and I have some people come and say, listen, when I grow up, I want to be just like you. You give them the vision that it's possible for them too. So it would be an honor to see that program come back because I know what it did for me. And the training that I received, solid training, certified AC, certified electrician, certified plumber, and just the sky's the limit when you apply yourself. I came from a single family home, uh, single mother, but I had a praying mother. She never gave up on me. So I am honored today to work alongside all these wonderful people. The work we do in the community, I just love it. I'm going to miss it, but I have an 11 year old son, so I have to step away to make sure he has everything that he needs to be better than me. And um, I want to thank Miss Ava, Mr. Jordan, Fred, everybody, Lee Quick, Patricia, everybody. Just anytime they ask me to do anything, I'm more than willing to have them, to, to jump in there and get it done. I'm so thankful to all my coworkers and all the love they showed. I was a little overwhelmed after this morning, so I had to go in my office and get myself together. <laughs> And um, I just really appreciate it. When I see young men in our developments, and I remember them as kids, and I see them as grown men, and they say, oh, I'm working at such and such construction company. They work CETA for me as a supervisor. So the example you set and the work we do, you have to be careful. I live by one thing. Do the right thing regardless of who's watching. 
because somebody always watching your life and always watching what you do, even the little stuff you do. So I want to thank everybody today. This is wonderful, awesome. And uh, my wife said she couldn't come because she was going to cry, and that was going to make me cry, and I ain't going to cry today. <laughs> Maybe Tuesday when I retire and wake up, might be another story. Thank you all. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. I think this was, has just been beautiful. Uh, Andre, uh, again, congratulations to your 30 years of service. We appreciate you sincerely. Uh, we know that the work that you have done has impacted countless lives, and we look forward to the next chapter of working with you to uh, help others identify their untapped potential. So thank you and congratulations on your retirement. We'll now move on back to the business. Uh, section three, consent agenda item number six. We have a motion by Vice Chair Segerbloom. Second. We have a sec by Commissioner Turner. Is there any discussion? Hearing and saying no, we'll move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Anyone opposed? Motion is adopted. This ends our consent agenda item. We will now move on to section number four, Commissioner's Executive Director's Recognitions. Director Jordan. Commissioners, uh, since we last gathered, the, um, the following residents have passed on. If we have a moment of silence for Rosemary Andrews, Audrey Gray, Paula Kellner, and Stanley Shaw. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Director Jordan. We'll now move, now move on to item uh, section number five, uh, item number eight, election of a chairperson. You can take your nominations. I would move to appoint, uh, reappoint. Oh. I would move to reappoint um, Commissioner McCurdy. I second the motion. Thank you. We have a motion by Vice Chair Segerblum, a second by Commissioner Turner. Is there any discussion? Hing and saying none, we'll move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Anyone opposed? Thank you so much. I'm honored to give it another go around. It's unanimous. Uh, we'll now move on to item number nine, election of vice chairperson. And I uh, move to reappoint Commissioner Sagerbloom as vice chair. I second the motion. We have a motion by me, a second by uh, Commissioner Turner. Is there any discussion? I mean, excuse me, Craig, is there any discussion? Hingerson, saying no, we'll move to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Anyone opposed? Congratulations, Vice Chair Sagerbloom. Thank you. Uh, we'll now move on to item number six, new business items. Chair, I, I have a correction. Commissioner Turner. She, um, uh, Commissioner Craig second the motion for the chairperson. Commissioner, yeah, yeah, I did. She did twice. Okay. Commissioner Craig, Thank got it. You. Commissioner Craig she still uh, like me, seconded right? motion for the president. <laughs> and she seconded the motion for <laughs> chair as well. So the record reflects we appreciate you. Um, any other business items that uh, the board would like to see come forward? This is an uh, opportunity for we to discuss uh, any items we would like to see on future agendas. Uh, there was a comment made by Commissioner Craig uh, just speaking to uh, the, the new security that we have in place, and I, she could speak on that if she like. Yeah, I really want to cry, but I'm trying not to. I just, I, I'm just very, very grateful, and I'm sure many of you all are quite aware of uh, safety issues that are occurring, uh, particularly when it's happening in the schools, after it's happening with the young, you know, we know it can happen with us, and we have a lot of people with a lot of issues. And I want to cry because I was so happy to see people getting scanned because our society is changing, and I want to thank Mr. Jordan and everybody else who's been responsible for getting that done because it's critical. And I want people to feel comfortable coming in here and not being afraid that somebody's carrying a gun or a weapon. Thank you so much, Commissioner Craig. Uh, this concludes... 
our, our business items. We'll now move on to the last item, uh, comments by the general public. This is a second time set aside for public comment. Uh, this is where you can come forward and speak to items that are not on the agenda. We ask that you uh, remain respectful during your comments. Do not offer any deflammatory uh, comments, but we do ask that you say your first last name, property for the record, and you will have three minutes. And if uh, there is a desire to do so after your three minutes, you can be extended time by a majority vote. Please come forward at this time. I have Mr. Rick Rosen. I have a Shamoya Lacey. Okay, so I didn't have a comment card, so we'll just go. We'll just we'll just run it. Francisco. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, first of all, I haven't been here in quite a while, but um, I see there's been a lot of changes. Um, I'm from Sartini Plaza. I've been there for eight years now, and um, there's a lot going there that is causing a lot of uncomfortable living. Uh, not due to uh, not due to to other people, but what's happening in, in the apartments that are run down. They're doing some some renovations, but the people that live there and pay their rent on time every month without concessions or anything like that. There are things that are wrong. In my apartment, I have a stove that's been having a short. I have to stand there because it'll go up all by itself. It almost caught me one time with a fire. And um, they won't remove it because they said they're renovating all the new stuff goes to the other apartments. So I said, well, I need one of those because the apartment I have has mold. I have a big old giant hole that's bigger than that uh, light on my patio and in my closet. People come through there and crawl there and it's, it's, it's really bad. It's on the second floors in the front and I'm the second floor in the back, but I have the biggest hole. And um, now water bugs are coming in and all that. I have a toilet that has bugs that eat my butt. They said it's a... The maintenance guy said, well, you got to get some of those, um, um, like these uh, uh, clean it and stuff like that. I clean it, I, but the bugs keep coming back because sometimes the water pressure is really low, so uh, it doesn't flush properly. Uh, but they said it's uh, the bugs that like uh, anoleum and all that, that type of stuff. They're black. I have pictures. Anyway. Um, also, we have an elevator that is destroying people's lives in this building because a lot of people can't go down the stairwells. A lot of people can't go up the stairwells. The two elevators have really been out of order since last year. Well, I'll say eight years since I've been there. And it's gotten worse and worse and worse. So we have a contractor that's supposed to do the elevators. But one elevator is non-operational, and the other one is getting torn up. Like They have the guy practically sleeping in our laundry room so he can fix it, because by the time the basket comes, uh, it's out again. So people have to go down the stairs, up the stairs. Yesterday, uh, we lost Elizabeth. Yeah. <coughs> Elizabeth was... Uh, I'm sorry, uh, that concludes your time, but if you can just let us know uh, your name for the record, you didn't state your name on the record? My name is Lisa Curtis. I stay in apartment 235. 235 Sartini Plaza. Thank you. If you just hang tight, uh, we'll get someone to follow up with you and get some Thank of those Thank you very much addressed. for hearing me. I just hope that we can get something done to our building. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming today. Uh, we have Mr. Rick Rosen. And I am Rick Rosen. I live at Rule on Earl, uh, Space 56, and I am the head of the resident council uh, simply because there was no one else to take the job. And I want to make certain that this goes on the record that, from what I understand, the plans are for Rule on Earl totally changes up a contract unilaterally. And I, from everything I can understand, that's, that's illegal. It, it just can't be modified to our detriment without our input. 
and I just want to make certain that was on the record. And if we can, if we can work together, and we're very willing to do that, but it is the deterioration. It, it almost mimics uh, the climate change. The deterioration is getting worse and worse. We have an influx of people living there that have not qualified that we had to qualify. If someone passes away, their kinfolk take over the house and live there and they're in there some of them are in their 20s and 30s we have people now that come in two three o'clock in the morning with stereos blaring it's a senior citizens mobile home park that's what we all purchased our our, our homes at and so the the goalposts have been moved and the game seems to have been changed and i don't believe it's it's kosher to do that and i just want to make certain that it's on the record and and state our willingness to work and to make sure we can we can make it better. So that's it. I do appreciate the job that the, you all do. I, I'm fairly certain it's a fairly thankless job. So I appreciate it and thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Mr. Rosen. Um, Shamoya, Lacey, welcome. Good afternoon. My name is Shamoya Lacey, like he addressed. Um, I am no longer a resident under the Housing Authority. I was. I was illegally evicted. Um, once again, I'm going to say that just like everyone else that has got up here on public comment has made it brought it to you guys' attention that there is issues. There's been no accountability on several levels as far as evictions, uh, work orders, being in uh, units that are not up to par where people shouldn't even be. I've uh, witnessed it myself, have documentation, because this is what I do. I, because of what has happened to me, I advocate for myself and others. Uh, Phyllis Carpenter, she's one that has experienced things that have been uh, addressed here, and then when we leave, you get something said about it, and then they'll make an attempt, and then nothing happens after that. It's like we go through this daily. I mean, we get up here and hear about people's accomplishments, which is good and great. I'm glad for it. But what about the tenants? What about the community? What about we don't see any of them in here? The most of the people we see in here is staff, and that's only because they're not aware of these board meetings. They're not aware that they can come here and get help and, and, and get things out there to make it aware to you guys. Uh what he spoke about with the Raiders, a lot of those people that attended that don't feel the same way about him, don't feel the experience was the same way, and don't feel that and say differently from what happened. So it's things that's being said that's supposed to be going on with the tenants and in the community that is not accurate. It, it is not true. I mean, we're still not getting our needs met on a daily basis. It's people that's dealing with medical issues due to the stress that they're enduring and that they have to go through with their living situations, with staff brushing you off and talking to you like you're nothing, when you should address everybody with respect if respect is being given to you. It's their job to address our needs. And if we don't understand something, it's not your job to tear me down as a person and tell me I need to read that board or do this or do that. Because if I'm coming to you as a peer, or after, as someone that's over me, I'm seeking your knowledge or your uh, wisdom to point me in the right direction. It's not, that's not what's being given to us. And we come time and time again and say this. And then we come time and time again and sit here and try to get our needs met and they're still not being met. So the things that are saying, that are being said, that's being taken care of, it's not because the community sees the difference. And I have the documentations and, 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 and the written statements and the recorded uh, interviews with these people stating that. So I'm just bringing it to you guys' attention again, not only me, but the people that have stood up here and told you that rules and regulations, CFRs, and things of that matter are not being followed, it needs to be some accountability. And I'm asking again that someone please look into this and start taking accountability and helping us instead of, because we cannot succeed if we don't have the help to see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We'll now move on to Phyllis Carpenter. Hi, Phyllis Carpenter, 2901 Schaefer, Schaefer Circle, C3. So last month, as I told you, at the very end, um, I was being bitten. I, I was hospitalized from Friday till Monday. They wanted to keep me until tomorrow, but I just asked them to send me home with the antibiotics because I didn't like being in the hospital um, due to these bites. At the very least, the um, infectious disease, if they have not gotten a hold of you, they will be because I got MRSA from the bites. Um, the job bank, uh, 
I went, I, I, so I, I signed up for the Section 3 job bank. Uh, that morning I met with my SFS worker. She told me how she doesn't do the job bank anymore, but Dominique does. So is Dominique a assistant, office assistant, or is she the job bank person? Just saying. Um, so I went to the Section 3 orientation, um, and anybody that is a normal adult that, ha that has any type of worth et ethnics knows everything that they taught in that class. And it wasn't Dominique teaching the class, it was Laura Morgan teaching the class. Dominique didn't say not one word, uh, to the point to where I raised my hand and Miss Morgan said, I thought you said that you wasn't gonna disrupt my class today. I said, I'm trying to ask a question. And she, she basically just cut me off and I got up and I had to walk away because I had an anxiety attack. And then she's gonna say something about, uh, and people don't go to interviews with a scab on their face because I was hit in the face with a firework um, on 4th of July. And that's why I had a sore on my face and I, I have it all recorded. It's just not right. As well as the application. So I did the job bank and section three, you don't have to put in a, a resume or um, be interviewed it's the first the, the, the person that is most qualified that lives in low-income housing gets first dibs at that job once they turn it down they can outsource wherever they want but they have to hire the most qualified individual in low-income housing and that's not being done um, as well as these comment cards so he suggest he said that in North Las Vegas that's what they do and then the next meeting we have these no vote on it no nothing and I just don't understand that um, as well as I shouldn't have to ask for an agenda every month. Um, she, I want one, and you guys aren't posting them in the front office either. Um, and um, I, I'm just so flustered right now, I can't even see straight. Um, also, Ms. Craig, since the rad, and I love you to death, I do, but since the property went rad, you're not allowed to be a board. You're not allowed to be on the board anymore, are you? Because it's a rad property. I mean, you might be able to finish out your term, but you guys need to check into that too. Because once they went to rad, you need to get a new commissioner. Um, also, uh, just like Shamoya said, you know, nothing ever happens. They act like they're doing something, and then nothing happens. Thank you for your joining us. Um, are there any other points of public comment at this period? either in person or on the phone. Please come forward at this time. Please state your name for the record as well as your uh, complex. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jocelyn Kenzanary. I live scattered sites, um, 1941 Dunham Street, Henderson, Nevada, 89011. I have been trying to raise funding. Uh, I've been on the board for, well, the committee board for four years when I was with the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. And I've been raising funding for a long time and I keep on getting stopped at this extent, although most of my work was um, online and, and um, raising or giving ideas to raise money and helping out different countries, different whatever it was. And now it's like, who am I? You know, data has been a very operating thing and on, on um, on my adjust is that I just kind of declared ideas for this, ideas for that, you know, the drought. And and right now there's a fund being offered. I'm not sure. I've been scammed so many times. And also, you know, um, everything I do kind of turns into someone else's name. So particularly I'm asking for uh, the board's approval if this is a, a fund. I think I have to raise some capital for it, so to speak to somebody. But I would like to offer some of it also. Um, and I think it's from work that I did and ideas I did for a long time ago and would like to continue if people are offering money to bring into Nevada. You know, I was from California, Hawaii, Texas, so now that I've been in Nevada for a while, I hope to um, be approved for such things and also to be able to utilize and, and give, you know, invest them and put into the community and economical growth of society and see things flourish and thank you for everything <laughs> thank you so much and we'll ask uh, for those who are issuing out these blue cards for our last two presenters can we make sure that they have blue cards so we can follow up with you know some of their concerns thank you 
Uh, hearing and seeing no one else, this meeting is adjourned.